hello everyone and welcome back to another video um you watching this probably means that you're looking for an alternative to pfsense after the recent debacle and um if you have seen my previous video um you know that i have five different alternatives that i want to show you guys um this is going to be the first video that uh, we're gonna be starting off with one of the alternatives and the first alternative that i will be presenting to you guys is called untango or under their new name arista edge appliance um the installation for it is actually pretty straightforward i did a little bit of a mistake and started the virtual machine um without realizing that the installation is automated so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead we're gonna start the installation again we're gonna start off the installation uh as it normally would if it was um a fresh installation because as i mentioned i did not realize that the installation is automated so we're gonna select the um dvd external and then we're gonna go ahead and select graphical install and that's pretty much it the installation is going to start off by itself and it takes about half an hour maybe 45 minutes uh to install but that's because my <sighs> virtual environment isn't perfect on an ssd it maybe takes 10 minutes and that's being generous so that being said uh we're gonna i'm gonna let this finish the installation process and i'll see you guys as soon as it is done and installation is done um something that you guys are going to notice now um, sorry, almost done. Right after uh, the bootloader is done installing, it will officially be done. But um, something that you guys are going to notice, um, whether it's going to be my instance or your instance at home, is that the first, uh, the first boot is going to be very, very um, long. I personally don't know why that is. Um, especially with this firewall because the iso isn't really that big it's like i believe six seven hundred megabytes so <clears throat> um i i think that if you are running it off of an ssd uh your boot up process is going to be much quicker uh, not to mention the cell process as well um just generally they're going to be much quicker than uh what i have i have waited for about 15 to 20 minutes already but uh, that should not be an issue for you guys. As soon as the um, firewall is finished installing and we boot up into the um, main window of the operating system, you guys are going to see uh, some of the strengths and advantages of having this as your personal firewall. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, here we are in the uh, boot menu for the um, firewall appliance. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to do a generic boot into the operating system. I believe this is based off of uh, Debian with a slightly older, um, sorry, with a slightly older kernel. Um, but don't be, uh, don't be too alarmed because they are still actively supporting and through the, once your installate, once your, sorry, once your firewall is connected to the internet, you do get, um, security updates and kernel updates as well. So we are going to boot up into the, um, operating system. Like I said, it does take. A little bit and this is where we're just gonna have to wait for the operating system to boot and uh, here we are so once the new installation of your um, Arista firewall of your Arista firewall finally boots up uh, you are going to be greeted by this uh, background it's basically saying Arista NG and the Chromium 
uh, launcher is going to open up so and you will be welcomed by the welcome wizard now this is uh, my personal remark, but I do welcome you guys to try it out for yourselves if that's something that you're interested in. One of the most positive things about uh, the Arista slash Untango uh, firewall appliance is that you do not need a secondary system to perform any configuration. And this is, I'm, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by now is that because it is its own um, distribution with its own browser and everything you can perform the necessary configuration from the machine itself this is what you are seeing this is actually the virtual machine where the actual firewall is hosted this is not a secondary machine such as like a Debian desktop or an OpenSUSE desktop that I need to have separately set up so that I can connect to the firewall and configure it from there. So we are going to go ahead and configure it. Um, the initially it will error out and that's totally normal. Um, but basically what you want to do is let it error out and then run the setup wizard locally and i don't know why it errors out because it autom it properly detects the dhcp configuration and it gets an outside ip i it's just whatever um it's something that i am used to this is where you are going to set up a password for it. So let's go ahead and set up a password for it. Uh, Noatthanks.com. Um, I don't really understand why the um, installation type is a mandatory um, option. It's just, it is. Um, it will not let you finish your installation without it and then once you set up your time zone uh, you're gonna go ahead and go into your network cards now one of uh, another piece of the um, huge strength that I think um, Untangle has above firewalls is that once you're here uh, you can visually inspect the uh, MAC address of the uh, network cards that you are using and then decide um, which one you want to use, how you want to use it, whether it's going to be your wide area network interface or your local area network. And once you have that selected, continue on to the next one. So this is where we're going to do a test of connectivity. And as you can see, our options haven't really changed, but this time we are able to connect to the internet with it. So we're gonna click on okay, and then we're gonna continue on to the next window, which is internal network. Okay, so don't worry about that pop-up window. Um, in the difference between router and transparent bridge is um, that when you set up Untangle working as a router, you have network address translation and DHCP. Um, when you're working, uh, sorry, when you're using it as a transparent bridge, um, it basically means that you're offloading the NAT and DHCP uh, functionality to another, um, whether it's gonna be appliance, whether it's gonna be a physical device um, to do that work for you. But because in, in this scenario, we are using it as a router, we are just going to go ahead, edit this real quick, and we're gonna leave the internal network mask depending on the size of our network. So me, I don't really want it to be very big. So we're just gonna leave it at a slash 25. Um, you don't 
have a requirement <clears throat> sorry you don't have a huge requirement to be fluent in networking but you do require to have a basic understanding of um, networking just so that you can configure uh, some basic things such as uh, DHCP ranges, uh, net mask, which dictates how big your networks are going to be. You need to know how to subnet your internal network. So by having a slash 25, you need to know that you only have 127 addresses available to host, so on and so forth. But um, we are going to keep it simple i am going to walk you through everything that i do as configuration and i am going to be applying my knowledge so that you don't have to so once you have selected your internal address and the size of your network you can also select whether or not dhcp can be um, enabled or disabled and uh, the reason why you can choose to have it disabled is for installations that have Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP services installed on a virtual machine or on a machine somewhere that is not on the firewall appliance itself. You can have it, uh, you can have that as your authoritative DHCP server on the network and the um, Untango or the Arista firewall is not going to be um, intervening with that. So let's go ahead and click on to the next window, which is auto upgrades. In this section, um, you would ideally leave both of those check boxes with the check mark inside it. Uh, ideally because the upgrades will install by themselves and the ETM dashboard is something that um, allows you to have remote access to your firewall anywhere on the planet. Um, there are two sides of it, I believe. Um, one of them is, it, it's amazing because if there's trouble at home, you can just connect remotely to your firewall or maybe you have it somewhere remotely and you just connect to your firewall, do what needs to be done, whether uh, set up a VPN or fix a networking problem save the uh, save the changes and just go ahead and apply but on the other hand i see that as a security hole because um that somehow needs to connect to your firewall and usually that means that there is a back door um open and facing the internet which makes your firewall vulnerable um I personally, when I was using it back on release, I believe 15.9 or something like that, it's it's been a while. Um, this, is, this was way, uh, just a little bit before they introduced the uh, ETM dashboard. It was working still phenomenally for what it was. I don't have any complaints in the sense that I do not know whether or not it is a security um, problem, but it's just something to uh, keep an open mind towards that it could be used as a leverage point to enter your network and that you probably need somebody who's highly skilled in uh, network penetration for that to work out. So once you have decided, you can always, you know, deselect this and not have it connected to an ETM dashboard. Um, I personally leave it on because it does allow a little bit of practicality and I'm going to show you just a little later um, how you can how you can select that and uh, make it work for you. But once we have selected our working combination, we're gonna go ahead and click on finish and the Arista server is now configured. So we're going to go into the dashboard. And once the dashboard loads for us, this is what you should be seeing, uh, maybe in a little uh, better better um, uh, resolution on your machine. But this is why I personally believe that the Untangle firewall um, solution has a advantage over any other 
open source and free firewall appliance when it comes to beginner users because the primary primary focus is that when you are working on your firewall you are working on your firewall directly you do not need a secondary machine to access your firewall and if you um, have ever hosted uh, pfsense opensense ip fire vios you know exactly what i mean um by 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 saying that you need a secondary machine to um to connect to your firewall because the gui is usually not accessible from the local machine and for vios and ip fire uh, for two firewalls that don't even have gui you need a way to connect to it via um, ssh uh, to make any configurations if you do not have <clears throat> sorry if you do not have access to the physical machine so um this is the quick uh rundown of how arista uh firewall solution is installed in the upcoming videos we are going to go through the uh different sub menus uh we're going to um connect it to the um uh, etm dashboard and we're going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to configure it um, so that we can become more or less familiar with the um, user interface and if this is something that um, piques your interest by all means go ahead install it uh, li like I said the installation is automated from start to finish with the exception of when you actually have to log in and start performing configurations by yourself. Um, test it, have some fun with it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.